This video was brought to you by Brilliant. Years of democratic progress in Serbia is in jeopardy after last week Serbia's president Aleksandar Vucic threatened to leave the Council of Europe if Kosovo was accepted as a member. Now the country has been governed for more than a decade by Vucic's SNS party and during this time Vucic has pursued a delicate balancing act between what we might euphemistically describe as the East and the West. This balancing act has, up until now, worked out quite well for him, but it now seems that the EU is getting more and more fed up with this act, and there's some real possibility that after years of Vucic's bluffing, Serbia and the EU might actually be about to break up. So in this video, we're going to take a look at Vucic's attitude towards joining the EU, why it's changing, and what could happen next. Before we start, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing and ringing the bell to stay in the loop and be notified when we release new videos. Firstly, to better understand why Serbia might be finally turning away from its EU aspirations, we need to explain a bit about Serbian politics during the post milosevic era and Vucic's own political history. And that's because Vucic has switched political allegiances many times in the past. He started his 30-year political career as the Minister of Information in the ultra-nationalist Serbian Radical Party. Fifteen years later though, after two wars, a NATO bombing campaign and Kosovo's independence, a pro-European shift occurred within Serbia's politics, and Vucic moved with it. In 2003, Serbia signed a stabilisation and association agreement with the European Union, which essentially laid out Serbia's plans to eventually join the EU. This shift was led by the dominant Democrat party, and EU accession became a hot topic in Serbian politics. In this new environment, Vucic's predecessor, President Boris Tadic, announced in 2009 that Serbia's foreign policy would be based on maintaining good relations with four key entities – the EU, United States, China and Russia. And also during this time, Vucic moved from the Radical Nationalist Party to the newly formed pro-European Serbian Progressive Party or SNS, which splintered from the Serbian Radical Party over disagreements regarding EU integration. So today, what are the SNS's foreign policies and attitudes towards the EU? Well, unlike many other Eastern European populist parties, the SNS is formally pro-EU, and the country has been working towards meeting the EU's conditions for accession ever since Vucic and the SNS took over. However, the biggest obstacle to Serbia's EU accession has been a strained relationship with Kosovo, which declared its independence in 2008. As you might already know, Serbia doesn't recognise Kosovo's independence, but most of the EU does, and the issue has become a sticking point for accession negotiations. While the EU maintains that Serbia's recognition of Kosovo is not a prerequisite for joining the EU, instead just requiring a quote, normalisation of relations between the two countries, Little progress has been made on this front, and the EU integration process has basically stalled. At the same time, Serbia's democracy is backsliding, and media freedoms are being further restricted, with Vucic refusing to abandon its relationship with Russia, and even congratulating Putin on his election win earlier this month. Then, last week, Vucic issued an ultimatum to the West to pick between Kosovo and Serbia, warning that if the West did not pick Serbia, then Serbia would, quote, wait for the best moment and seize the opportunity, alluding to a possible invasion of Kosovo. All in all, it's becoming more and more clear that Vucic's balancing act between West and East is rather just buying for time and becoming increasingly untenable. And that, faced with this predicament, he's apparently decided to ditch the West. So what's changed now that seems to have triggered this policy change? Well, the way we see it, there are two reasons. Firstly, the EU adopting a harsher stance against Vucic's autocratic tendencies, and secondly, Kosovo becoming a member of the Council of Europe. Let's start with the EU's new attitude towards Vucic's authoritarianism. For years, the EU has stayed relatively quiet amidst accusations of corruption, voting irregularities, and an increase in autocratic practices from Vucic's government. But why? Well, because maintaining stability in the Balkans is a top priority for the EU, and Vucic has become somewhat of a reliable partner for the EU. So 
they want to keep him on side. But this February, Brussels changed that tone. The European Parliament adopted a resolution calling for the EU to stop funding Serbia if it discovered that they committed electoral fraud in last December's parliamentary elections. That's because Vucic's SNS party had been accused of bussing in Bosnian Serbs from Bosnia's Republika Srpska entity to vote in Belgrade, after fearing that they may lose the majority to the opposition. In reaction to the European Parliament's resolution, there was a barrage of anti-EU criticism across state-controlled media in the country. The second thing that's triggered this, though, is the fact that the Council of Europe is likely to finalise Kosovo's membership this spring, after the Kosovan government fulfilled a key membership requirement, the transfer of 24 hectares of land to the Vsoki Dachani Serbian Monastery. Now, while Serbia has vetoed Kosovo's membership in the past, the Council does not require voting unanimity, but rather two-thirds of the vote. Since Russia was expelled following the invasion of Ukraine, currently two-thirds of CE members recognise Kosovo as an independent country, which means that unless the CE Parliamentary Committee block the process, which could still happen as Kosovo has not implemented the Association of Serbian Majority Municipalities, Kosovo could become the newest member of the Council of Europe this spring. And it's this prospect which has triggered last week's ultimatum, because, according to Vucic, accepting Kosovo would de facto mean kicking out Serbia. Now, the EU and Council of Europe are two separate entities, but no state has become an EU member without first becoming a member of the Council of Europe. And that's because the Council of Europe was created as essentially a forerunner for the EU, in order to improve the protection of human rights, democracy, and the rule of law in Europe. Leaving the CE would mean Serbia losing the protection of the ECHR, and the support of external bodies such as the Venice Commission and Greco, which are essential for monitoring reforms in the country. Basically, without membership in the CE, there can be no membership in the EU. So therefore, if Kosovo does become a member, and Vucic does decide to leave the CE, Serbia's EU dreams will effectively be completely abandoned. So it seems that after years, Vucic's foreign policy ambiguity may finally be coming to an end. Abandoning the EU won't come without cost, though, and the economic implications could be disastrous, considering the EU is Serbia's biggest trading partner. In fact, the only way that Vucic can really continue the way he has, and still aspire for EU membership, is if there was a big win from the far right in the European parliamentary elections this June. That's because Vucic will be hoping for more populist and autocratic Viktor Orban and Robert Fico types in Parliament, which will give him more room to manoeuvre with Brussels and other key European partners. But if Vucic doesn't pull Serbia out of the CE immediately, he may just continue playing for time, hoping that a far-right parliamentary majority may allow him to continue this balancing act well into the future. Now, understanding what exactly is going to happen here is a little tricky, requiring you to evaluate a lot of different information from often partial sources. It'll be sensible then to begin improving your own critical thinking skills so that you can stay sharp and better understand what's going on. And, well, our sponsor, Brilliant.org, can help you do exactly that. Brilliant is the online learning platform that's designed specifically to teach you everything from maths, data analysis, programming, and AI from the ground up. You don't need a fancy degree or to have dedicated hundreds of hours to studying any of these topics. All you need is a device with an internet connection and a spare few minutes a day. And with those few minutes, you'll be learning by actually doing. Because Brilliant allows you hands-on lessons that allow you to play around with concepts a method that has been shown to be six times more effective than just watching lectures. What makes this even better is that this content is created by an award-winning team of teachers, researchers, and professionals from MIT, Caltech, Duke, Microsoft, and more. You can try everything that Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days by clicking the link in the description. That way, you'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription.